Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your man, Mohammed Kamara. Welcome to the third module in week one of the Econ Bootcamp 2.0 training program. And welcome to the Six Figure Manifestation uh, module. In this module, it's going to be very uh, unlike everything else. It's going to be a lot of abstract kind of concepts and techniques that I use to basically change the way I look at life and change the way I approach situations, which has led to me as a result just of doing these things making over seven figures with my online businesses, creating an, a life of abundance for myself very early on as compared to most individuals. So uh, this module is gonna actually teach you a couple of things and it's gonna be abstract at first, but I do have a worksheet that we'll be working out of. So it's gonna kind of make things stick for you. And we're gonna tailor this into your six figure manifestation and see how we can get your actions and everything to align with your goals. So. A uh, few things to go over in this module, and here's what we're gonna cover. First things first, we need a pole. We need that north star, and we need to outline what we want. So, first thing I'm gonna cover here is how to identify what you need in your life and the things that you don't need in your life. And we're gonna go over exactly why you want those things that you do. And the best part about this is there's no right or wrong answers, but we need to have this North Star so at least we have a direction and something to shoot at. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to live multiple lives. There's just one word. It's this one word out there. And if you can manifest this one thing, you can live multiple lives as compared to many other individuals who lack productivity, who lack ambition, and who lack the ability to accomplish goals and achieve the things that they truly want in this life. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. I'm also going to show you how to maximize upside on any situation. There's few situations that drain us and take a lot more from us than we're putting in. And then there's a lot more situations out there that will return you a lot more than you put in. And that's where that's where you get the most return on investment. OK, so uh, we're gonna, really going to focus on where to direct your energy and this is going to give us basically a a lane or a street to drive down so that we know exactly how we're going to accomplish our goals to get what we want then i'm going to show you exactly how to turn any situation into a win because along that road along that journey you might come across some road bumps you might catch a flat tire things might happen and I'm going to show you how to turn any situation, most specifically any negative situation and turn that into a win. And we, when we can have this type of um, outlook on life, there's no fear in losing pretty much. And that uh, trains you to become fearless and take big risks while executing everything the right way. It's a beautiful thing. And I'm going to show you that. And then finally, we need to put some gas in that car. And I'm going to show you exactly why discipline trumps motivation every single time, okay? People think that they need to be motivated in order to do something or make something happen. Yeah, motivation is nice, but uh, discipline by all will single-handedly destroy motivation in any given situation. And I'm going to show you how to manifest this by the end of this module. So uh, first thing, big question, what do you want, okay? You've joined the e-commerce brew camp program. And, you know, obviously you want something, but what is it and what is that thing and why? That's the most important thing is that you, you need to ask yourself is why do you want these things? OK, it's not about the money. We all, you know, you can easily give this program to anybody, tell them to click a few buttons and then money comes out. But what happens after that? Why do you need that money? And I spoke to a lot of you and it, it pretty much came down to either, you know, wanting more time for yourself wanting to uh, get out of that nine to five trade and you know make income passively, but why? Take it even further than that. And I want you to ask yourself, what is the reason for you doing all of this? I know it's just not to make money. So um, an easy way to go about figuring this out is figuring out what you don't want in your life, okay? And simply by using the process of elimination, we can take a whole bunch of weight off of our shoulder in trying to figure out what we do want. Because the truth is, you're not gonna know what you want, you know, just from me asking you this question right now. It might take a couple days, it might take some weeks to hit, it might take a couple months, maybe years. But um, a good way to start off is to 
eliminate those things that you know you don't want right off the bat. So w whether this is, you know, jealous people in your life, whether this is just uh, bad energy, whether this is drugs, alcohol that's um, destroying your body, whatever it is, you can, you can eliminate that and that'll naturally push you in the direction that you do want. And ultimately, who do you do it for? We're all surrounded by people we love, uh, people that, that motivate us, people that drive us to do better in life. And once we can identify and hone in on these people and bring them closer to us, we now have a true motivator that's not temporary, okay? And this is going to be uh, a big reason why you do things. It's your North, your North Star, okay? So we're going to identify all of these things in a few here. Also, putting a number to it makes it tangible. And it, it's... It's great to outline your goals and the things that you want, but you ha you can't be abstract with it because that only makes the journey to get there a little bit more difficult. Imagine if somebody was to give you directions to go somewhere and they said, oh, yeah, just go around that block. Okay, well, you can go around that block or you could go to that zip code and um, not know exactly where you need to be to get to your destination rather than them giving you the address. So putting a number to it is like putting an address on our goals. So we know the final destination. We know where we need to go and we don't shy away from this. By being decisive this way, we can set a way to measure ourselves. And every time we get off track, we can push ourselves back into the right navigation. So we're getting um, to that address, right? So let me back out of here real quick. And I want to show you this worksheet. It's the six figure manifestation worksheet. And I want you to uh, download this. It's going to be to the bottom right side of this video. And once you open that up, uh, it's, it will be easier if you could print it out and just, you know, use a pen to fill this in. But what's going to happen here is these questions are pretty much going to align with um, these slides here. And I want you to go ahead and fill these out one by one and start to define the things you truly want in this life, okay? And I gave some examples of my answers right below each question so they're not too like plain and abstract and broad, but use this to your advantage so you can, you can make your goals tangible. Once you write it down, it's that much more um, real, okay? And then you can, that's how you manifest things into your life to actually make a change. So I'm going to keep referencing this list. Again, you can download that on the bottom right side of this video. But let's keep going here. And <clears throat> once we cover what we want and uh, you fill out, I believe it's uh, questions. So I believe it's questions one to three are pretty much going to cover the things that you want. Right now, we need to figure out how to focus our energy so that we're achieving this thing, all right? This is the big thing. How to live multiple lives, you have to learn how to focus, especially in a time and age where uh, people's attention span are at its shortest ever. This is a crucial time. And, you know, it's not about being lucky. It's, you know, being successful is not about being lucky. Making the most money is not about who um, was in the right place at the right time, who has the right connections. It's about who can focus on achieving their goal and getting that desired result, okay? So how to focus on what you want? Well, by doing this, you can literally live multiple lives. And let me back up here because think about it. How is it that, you know, a 24-year-old entrepreneur coming from uh, pretty much a background where money is like not even a conversation at the table, how is that person able to achieve more wealth than, you know, some 60 year olds have in their whole lifetime? You know, and we all have the same 24 hours in the day. But how is it that, you know, person A is able to achieve results that person B couldn't? And we all start, you know, we all breathe the same air. We all bleed the same. Right. We all start off out getting outside the womb as a child. You know, with no clothes, bare and crying. What is the difference? What happened there? Well, the difference is where um, each individual chose to focus their energy. There's two types of people. There's the short-term thinkers and then there's the long-term thinkers. Uh, people who think short-term, they're, 
they're pretty much aroused by stimuli and things that are happening in the environment. Whereas long-term thinkers are able to delay gratification and look at things in the big picture, in the big aspect of things. And I know this is kind of um, broad, so I got the drawing board out today. But let me just uh, draw something of what I'm trying to uh, get get you guys to understand here. So this is person A. Let me go to two. So this is person A, right? And person A has their focus is everywhere in a given day. So this is what their their pretty much their focus and their energy and their daily life is directed towards many things, making you know little or no progress towards these many things. Whether it's okay, it might be a mix of good and bad things, going to the gym. Uh, playing 2K, right? It might be um, cooking and eating. They can only focus on certain amounts of things in a particular day. But let's take person B, for example. And this person maybe focuses on just one thing. By stacking all of this energy, all of these bars right here are energy, and by stacking all of that in one singular direction, they're able to uh, achieve 10 times the results in one direction, right, than person A is. So person A might be a mix of, you know, 2K. It's gonna, I'm going to butcher this, but it's going to be 2K. It might be the gym, okay? It might be Netflix. Uh, it might be social media. It might be business. They might have a side business that they're working on. But let's take person B and say that all they're working on and focusing their energy on is their business. When it comes to person A and person B in business, if you put them at a matchup in this one category of business, it's obvious who wins, right? So that's what I mean by being able to you know, choose the things that you are going to spend your time on. The truth is we all we all are rich and it just depends what we spend our time on. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. Okay? So, um are you going to spend those things on short-term gratification or are you going to spend those on long-term um activities and kind of chip away at those things? So that's just the insight on how to look at situations like this. And think about it like this. We're all going to spend time Time and money will be spent either way, unless you just lock yourself off on some island off the shore and not participate in society, you can get away with that. But I don't know how uh, fulfilling your life would be at that point. But let's say um, you're going to spend that time. You're going to spend that money anyways. It's inevitable, right? So where do you, where you decide to spend it is what counts. How you decide to spend it is what counts. Okay, and by you being in this program, you're choosing to spend your time, you know, investing on something that's going to teach you how to make money forever. And you can then teach that to someone else or, you know, you can implement it over and over and over. It doesn't matter. Once you learn it, you can't unlearn it. And think of that, uh, that analogy I just showed. If you have 10 energy points to spend every 24 hours, how you spend that is going to determine the speed in which you reach your destination. Which is why person A, let's say this is a year span and they made this much progress in each direction. One, that's a lot of like confusion and a lot of things going on. And, and you know, there's not one singular direction. They're just reacting to stimuli. Oh, this pops up. Oh, let me do it. Oh, this pops up and just reacting in the environment rather than taking control and saying, okay, this is the thing I want to chip at. Let me put my energy in this thing, okay? So uh, choose to focus your energy points in one singular direction. I'm not telling you to like, you know, uh, not go to the gym or not play 2K at all, not do anything, but it should be very lopsided and uneven and aimed towards one purpose, okay? And those other things should be just to for leisure time. You know, you should maybe dedicate a point here for like, all right, let me chill. Oh, let me hang out with, with the boys, right? But ultimately, you want to be making more progress than your than person A. So now at this point, 
you want to define what you want and you want to define how you're going to shift your focus into getting those things that you want. Now, let's talk about maximizing your upside because it's one thing to get there, but it's another thing to get there fast, right? So we have to understand that life is a wave. I'm going to illustrate this on the drawing board soon too, but life is a wave. Everything comes in polar opposites. Heat doesn't exist without cold, right? There's happy and sad. Everything has its polar opposite. Success has failure. So knowing this, we have to sharpen our ax, okay? And, and this is a concept that was uh, taught to me in college by my college football coach. And he basically said, if you were given eight hours to cut a tree, you should spend the first six sharpening the ax. Now stick with me, I'm gonna, this is all gonna wrap up soon to make sense, but um, this doesn't mean that you're gonna spend the first six studying and not taking action. If It rather means, instead it means we're gonna spend the first six hours taking action before things blow up. Okay, so don't don't use this as an excuse to just say, oh, I'm studying for the first six hours. No, you have to take action. Then ultimately, that's what's going to um, lead to a burst and a, a, a moment in time where things shift. And those last two hours is going to be such a breeze because you've done all the hard work beforehand. And realize that this the red pill and the blue pill is a real life option. I know it's like a, a concept. And, you know, you might see memes about this thing, but it, think about it. Some people rather bet on, on like, the lottery, where the chances of winning a lottery is, like, less than a trillion, rather than betting on themselves to build a business that is far more of a likelihood of succeeding than just winning the lottery. And the thing about winning that lottery is, let's say you, you win, and th that money comes in overnight, pretty much. You haven't seen the failure. You haven't seen the polar opposite side of that. So thus, you're not going to appreciate the money that came in because you had, you had to do nothing for it. The effort was non-existent. So what happens to that money? It disappears because that's just not how life works. That's why most um, people who, who um, win the lotto, they go bankrupt. They go bankrupt because they don't have the appreciativeness and the gratitude to um, go through the troubling experiences, to go through those, the, the failures and things to achieve that success, right? But there is a loophole. And if you focus on things that have an inverted upside, there's some things that you can focus on that have maximum upside potential. And there's some things you can focus on that have no upside potential. And let me go back to the drawing board in this case to kind of depict where I'm coming from here. So um, so we all can agree life is a wave, right? Everything comes, the good days, bad days, hot, cold, right? But there's person A once again, and person A goes to, let's say they're starting at this point. And this is their, their timeline, right? Time. <clears throat> this person uh, goes to a university. And in, along that time, they're spending four years, they're spending, you know, a lot of resources, a lot of time just to learn how to make $50,000 a year. So this bar right here is 50K a year. And then in that time, they spent over 150K. This person spent over 150K to go to a college for four years that's gonna teach them how to make 50K and hopefully get a promotion and make 75 or 100, blah, blah. But then take person B who focused on upside activities and maximizing upside potential. This person invests $1,000 into a course which is gonna teach them how to make a million. These are two very different lives. These are two very different lives to live. And these are two type of people with different mindsets. Okay, this person is focusing on um, doing the least amount of output to get the maximum amount of return on investment. 
And this is what I mean by maximizing your upside. There's certain tasks and, you know, just analyze any situation like this and you'll see whether it should be important to you or not and whether you should prioritize it or not. This, this task right here requires investing just 1K instead of 150K. The potential of you make, becoming successful with this is more than winning the lotto. Is, is more than that, right? Or more than you, um, you know, because everybody that goes to college is not going to get a job. It's probably like 60%, okay? And, you know, you place, the, you place the bets here. You do the math. And just look at which one has, which one's life is set up to be, you know, more successful in the long run. Who's setting themselves up to have the, the maximum upside? It's obviously person B, okay? This is where you want to be. You want to be investing in activities like this. So this is how you should approach situations um, going forward, you know? Do the least amount of effort that gets you the maximum amount of results. And this is what people refer to as working hard or work, you know, not working um, hard, but working smart. But uh, something like this, this program is a maximum upside, you know, type of uh, potential. It has that potential if you follow the, the curriculum and do things the right way. So now at this point, we know what we want. You know, at least we have a general concept and an idea of what we want. We know how to focus our energy to get that thing that we want. We, we want the odds to be in our favor as far as making sure that the uh, maximum upside potential is there. We're focusing our energy on what we want, but we're focusing it on the right thing rather than, you know, uh, something that's not going to give us the maximum upside. But now, along that journey, we're going to hit some road bumps. There's things that's going to pop up. It does, success does not exist without you failing. Let's get over that and realize, let's all come to the conclusion in this video that there's gonna be some points where you fail. Things are gonna go wrong, but how you react to that is what's gonna determine whether you succeed or not. Okay, so let me show you how to win every situation so you don't have to deal with failure and look it in the face. Instead, you're learning from them. So first off, challenge the world with your curiosity. Okay, it's okay to be curious. You know, people like to, uh, I don't know, there's this like this notion that only right and wrong exists. It's only black and white, but that's not it, okay? There's, there's a gray area in a lot of things. You know, as humans, we're complex creatures and we want to learn. And, you know, there's no binary decisions going on in our daily lives. So you have to approach these situations taking it with a grain of salt and saying, all right, what did I learn instead of what did I lose? Okay, challenge the world with your, your curiosity and challenge yourself to learn out of every situation rather than just looking at the financial losses or, or how it made you feel. And, you know, remove all of that, th those emotions. That's, that's feeling emotional about it. And that's not going to get you anywhere. And this is one of the things my, my pops told me. He said, Look, don't try to make the right decision all the time because then you one, you're either not going to make a decision two, you're either going to regret a lot of decisions you make. And that's not setting yourself up to look forward and to be optimistic. Instead, whatever decision you make, try to make that decision right. So at this point, any loss or any L you take becomes a win. OK, this is how you set yourself up to win and uh, look at things from an optimistic standpoint. Uh, and, and consider this, too. Uh, I like to use this woodpecker analogy because um, you can't do something every single day and not get better at it. A woodpecker has the ability to cut down a tree. It's such a small animal, but it's able to keep chipping away one day at a time, one day at a time. And it might not be the best thing for that woodpecker but if its ultimate goal and its ultimate desire is to cut down that tree it can by persistently uh chipping away at the bark of that tree so understand that every day that goes by in your work in your your life any situation you only get better at it as it goes on whether you like it or not even if you you don't like it whatever you decide to do on consistently on a daily basis you become better at
adapt and readapt. Okay, this is biologically programmed in us for us to survive. And it, it's gotten humans this far. So it, whenever situations pop up, don't have just one singular way of looking at that situation. Look at it from other perspectives. Adapt to the situation where it's not a loss for you. Adapt to it to where you see the, the, the positives that come out of that situation rather than, again, what did I lose? Because then you always have something that you lost, you know? And at that point, now we, we're taking, you know, steps in the right direction towards the goal we want. We're focusing all our energy into this goal. And now, you know, we need to make sure that we don't go off of the, the navigation. You know, I'm, I'm kind of here to be that navigation and that GPS for you. But, you know, sometimes you might miss a turn. And you're going to need discipline in order to recalibrate and get back to that address that we were talking about. So um, discipline is far better than motivation in this sense to get you back on track. First of all, let's cover the definition because discipline is to train oneself to do something in a controlled and habitual way. You're training yourself and you have control. Okay, that's the key word here is control. You control your life. You control the car that you're driving. Okay, motivation, on the other hand, is defined as the process that initiates goal-oriented behaviors. So I'm not saying motivation is bad. I'm not saying, um, you know, don't look for motivation. Motivation is great when you have it. It's cool. But it's temporary. And it's, it's a stimuli. It only makes you react to get things you know, initiated, but we need discipline to make up for it when motivation dies out and motivation isn't there. We need to take control of that car and put it back into the right lane so that we get to that address because that address is all that matters, okay? You have to be relentless about that. And realize this, your brain does not care about your goals. Your brain knows, you know, you you probably preach to yourself, um, you know, Constantly, hey, I want the, I want to manifest these things. I want that Lambo. Oh, I want this nice car. I want to have 50K in the bank. But your brain is stimulated by short-term gratification. Therefore, when that weekend comes up and that check comes in, you know, now emotionally you're aroused to go spend that check at the mall. You, you're aroused to go um, get bottle service at the club. But that's not contributing to your long-term goal. So you have to have the discipline to realize when you're going off track and steer back into that lane. Okay, let's get to that address first. And then, you know, whatever you decide to do after that is your choice. But let's get this, let's get you to that address. And then finally, is just stick to your word. Okay, the bottom line, if you needed to summarize discipline, and you need to summarize it by saying this, do it even when you don't feel like it. You know, as, as a athlete, it's easy to understand this concept because most athletes don't like going to practice. I don't know a single athlete that likes going to practice. It would be nice to just show up on game day and perform and look like a star, right? But there's a reason you have to go. There's times where you just don't, like that's the last thing that you'd be wanting to do, especially if that's all you've been doing for, you know, the the past couple weeks. But you go to practice anyways because you, it gets you to that address. What you're going to be doing at practice is going to be sharpening your axe so that you get to that address. Okay, so discipline is far better than motivation. And I'm not saying motivation is bad, but don't rely on motivation to get things done. Rely on your discipline and your self-control. Okay, so that's... um. Just a few of the concepts I wanted to cover here. Again, I do have that uh, that checklist, or not checklist. I have this worksheet, and it's set up in a way where it's going to ask you questions based off of um, this presentation that I set up. And if you read it here, it says, in order to achieve our goals, we have to become a different person. This worksheet will allow you to identify who that person is within yourself. It works by defining the things that you want and don't, the things you don't want in your life, then identifying the actions you must take in order to achieve those desires. There's no right or wrong answer here. So keep the worksheet by your bedside 
read it out loud to yourself before going to bed and immediately after you wake up. And this is going to keep uh, reinstalling into your head. All right. Um, this is why I'm doing this. Okay. This is, this is what's going on today. It's going to keep you on track. And as you can see, the questions are set up in a way where we define your, you know, the who, the what, the why. And then we get into how, what's the vehicle. And then we start to eliminate some of these things that are toxic in our lives. And then we're going to talk about um, which tasks contribute to your goal. How you're going to spend your time every day towards that goal. Okay, so there's a, uh, this is a very helpful worksheet. And if I promise you, if you just leave this by your bedside, at least for the next six weeks, do tr trust me on this. Like, your the way you approach situations on a daily basis is going to be on another plane. Okay, it's going to be on another playing field, and you're just going to start to manifest a lot of the things that you want out of this life because ultimately you deserve it. And that's one of the last points I want to cover here is you don't want to be. Um, this guy, don't be, don't be the person that quits too early. Don't be the person that can't learn from that learning curve, right? I'm sure we've all seen the image like this before, but um, think oh, an easy way not to quit is just to think of the next day as being the best day, right? If this person had just went for one more day and said, you know what, I, I've been going at it for a while, but just one more day, they would have hit that gold rush. Or they would have hit those that jackpot, right? And it, throughout this whole process, you're learning too. You're learning here. So approach situations with this optimistic mindset. Um, you, you will never be able to lose. You will always be able to stay on track with your goal. You know, use that that a worksheet to kind of define your North Star. And I, I'm going to cap it off here because if you're born poor, it's not your fault. If you die poor, it's all your fault. And this is all comes down to taking accountability for all your actions. Take control over your life. Okay, stop letting things just happen to you. You are in control, okay? And there's no reason why person A can't do the things that person B is doing. It's just that person A doesn't realize it yet. Well, right now you have that realization. So it's going to be really, really um, simple and straightforward for you to... Move in the direction that makes sense for your life, okay? So I want to see you win. And the bottom line is you deserve it. You have to believe that you deserve it. And one of the questions on that worksheet is to um, have you confirm with yourself why you deserve it. Because you do, okay? There's a lot of people who feel guilty for, you know, making a certain amount of money or, or doing things. No, you just set up your cards the right way. So again, I want to see all the I win. Congratulations on completing week one of the Ecom Bootcamp 2.0 uh, training program. And I'm really excited. At this point, uh, we have our winning product. We have everything set up. And now it just comes down to execution and, you know, staying in line in with our goals here. Everything else, I'm going to make sure I do the best of my job to navigate you, to get you to the address and get to get to your North Star. But complete this download and this worksheet, okay? Don't sleep on it. All right. And with that being said, I'm going to wrap this up here in the next uh, module and starting in week two, we're going to actually go over the design of our million dollar theme. And I'm really, really excited for that. That's one of the final things we're going to do before we actually promote our store and start getting traffic and start getting sales. So uh, congratulations on completing week one again. Uh, I'll see you in the next week. Peace.